To Hello Nigeria, we have a very special guest in the studio with us, the one and only Baba K. You see him taking the news as a newscaster. We also know that he gets up to so much, but did you know that he does have a comedy show coming up tonight? And today we're going to be speaking to him about the several different hats that he wears in his career and exactly what you should expect on this Friday night and an event that you can honestly go to, have a great time and do something good and fun for once in a while. How are you doing though? Uh, I'm doing great, and you? I'm good, I'm yeah. good. How does it feel to be at the side? Usually you're the one who gives out the information, you're not asking any questions, nobody's yeah. asking you any questions. Well, I think, I think it's, it's cool, it's good. it's good to be on the other side to see how it feels when you're the one doing it most times, so, but I think it's cool. All right, so the other side, now that's not the only side where you're, give us an insight into the different hats you wear, your yeah. newscaster, father. <laughs> your radio, radio husband, you know, everything. Okay. Yeah, well, anything basically that has to do with entertainment, um, music, comedy. Ah, going to music as well. Yeah, I actually started with music. I, like I always tell people, music is my first love. Music remains my first love. Everything I do today started from music. Um, as time went on, I got to discover different sides of me or I got to evolve as a person. And so, but I, I still think music is my number one first love. Aside from the fact that comedy gives us money anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So how did you channel into comedy? What led you to go down that route? Funny enough, um, I, 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 there was never a time while I was growing up that I saw myself becoming a comedian. Honestly, I never did. Um, I actually saw myself more of um, an actor or probably music. Like I said, music was or music is still my first love. I started with music in church. I had a group, a musical group way back in 1996, it was a gospel a cappella group. Uh, we were around between 1996 and 2000. We, the group got disbanded and after then, I went to school, got to the university, studied theater arts. It was actually after the university that I discovered, while I was seven, that was when I discovered comedy. And it stuck, and since then. Usually some people will tell you that their comedy started from something that the worry people in worry parlance call yeah. wording when they yap each other wording. <laughs> I, I did that actually in school. I did that in secondary school. I remember while I was in secondary school, um, I was in this class, I think it was called SS, um, SS1F. You know those secondary schools where you have SS1A A, B, to SS1G. I yeah. was in SS1F. I don't know why. Maybe they felt I probably failed or maybe I failed severely. But I, I often <laughs> wondered why SS1F. And, most times, I used to yap guys, so they had this guy called Jones, I still remember his name. He was in SS1G, and the guy was the best yap master in his class. So every time, he kept on defeating a lot of guys. So one day they said, ah, Baba K, try this guy, now. and I knocked the guy out, man. So I became the yabis champion in my school that year. But that was just about it, the only thing I knew I could do at that time. After that time, it was during my NYC that I now discovered comedy full time. How? Now. Strange, strange. I, I served in the north. I served in Yobe State, and uh, if you're familiar with um, Yobe State, you will know that it's a Sharia state. You will know that um, it's not as developed as others. In fact, personally, I think Yobe State is one of the least developed states in the country. You can go around the state capital Damaturi in 30 minutes with a bike. That's how small the state capital is. And I was, I was in this small room that by um, where I was having gave to me at that time. Very, I think it was, it's a shack. That's the room. Uh, it was raining one night and the roof was leaking. In fact, several holes in the roof was leaking. And so I had to gather buckets around to make sure my house or my room wasn't flooded. And as it was filling, I was laughing because it was funny because I was like, ah, I wish my, my friends can see me like this. My friends way back in Lagos then, I wish if they see, if they see me like this, they would really laugh me out. And, the next morning, I got to church. I was in a church um, uh, then. And somehow they were like, anybody will get joke, on crack joke today. Today would they do something? So I just picked up the mic and I decided to narrate the story of what happened the previous night. And I was saying it the way I felt at that time and how funny it was to me and, and how sad I was because of the situation at that time. And the crowd was laughing. They went agog. So after the service, my pastor called me and said, young man, I think you should stick to this. Uh, probably I just listened to the voice of God. Mm. Yeah, so it worked anyway. Well, one thing is clear, and that's that you definitely persevere in what you do. But what would you say has been extremely challenging in the comedy industry, in your opinion? Um, the, the, the one thing is actually challenging in the entertainment industry, not just the comedy industry, the fact that you don't get support. 
as much as you need, especially when you're planning a program or an event or concert and you, um, you've planned so much and you, you hoped or you hope that somebody or one company or one brand will come all out to support you, but nobody comes out to support you. That's most challenging. And the fact that um, as a comedian, most of the time you're having to deal with the fact that people uh, steal your jokes. You know, you work so hard, you probably don't get the kind of platforms they get. And they hear you somewhere, take your jokes to those stage, crack those jokes, and they seem funny to the people. They keep referring them to the event while you are behind. Yeah, Georgie. Now let's talk about creating of content as a comedian. Would you say that uh, people or our society is a little more difficult with comedians or a little more harder on comedians than they are on singers? Reason being that the video can sing 30 billion for my account 30 billion times and we'll all vibe to it and sing along with the chorus. But when it comes to comedians, we're not quite that lenient, you know. Once you've heard the jokes once, twice, you don't want to hear it again. It's not as funny. It's not and easy like to say, recycle jokes. Exactly. So do you think that we're actually a little harder on comedians? And how do you go around this? I don't think it's a Nigerian problem. I think it's a global problem. Worldwide, um, people generally don't like um, hearing a joke more than once. They feel like they've heard it before. The punchline is not as heavy as it, as it was the first time you heard it. So... But I, I, I think that also helps us as comedians in another way because it puts you on your toes. It makes you walk 24-7. It makes you spontaneous. Um, if you see one person in the crowd in an event or you go to an event, you crack a joke there and you leave that event, you go to another event, you accidentally see one person from that previous event in another event. That can change your entire routine because you feel like that person already saw you in that event, mm -hmm. had all your materials, had all your jokes. It, you be, it's... It can be stressful because at that time, you're restructuring your routine just because of one person in the crowd. But for me, mostly, I think it helps me because it keeps me on my toes and I'm walking on the go. And how long does it take you to come up with your jokes and your stories? It takes me quite a lot because I, norm I, I really don't do the usual style of comedy. Um, and in fact, that's the reason why I'm doing this show now. Uh, the kind of comedy I do is called the absurd comedy of sound and monologues where I infuse sounds. I, uh, the punchline I created around the sound effect, the soundtrack, the music, and the monologues I give in between my performances. So what I do, you, you hardly find any other person do it. Yes, people are used to music comedy. People are used to the regular stand-up comedy. But what I do is more like um, sound effects and monologues. And so that takes quite, it takes much more time to do that compared to the regular comedians. Because and why did you decide that that's what you wanted yeah, to do? Yeah, because um, um, first of all, I, I felt I needed to be unique. I needed to stand out in a porous market, in a porous industry where you have um, comedians springing up every day. You need, I needed to do something to uh, make me noticeable. Because if I do the regular comedy that everybody does, you know, I'll just be regarded as one of those comedians. And I really didn't want that. I wanted somebody to see me and appreciate the time, the effort, and the work I put into um, the content that I do out for people to see. And so for five years, I was working, trying to see how I could reinvent myself, bring out the style of comedy. And so far, so good. The acceptance it's been gaining has been wonderful. And tonight, um, let them all come out and see it. Let's look at Nigerian acceptance to comedy, the acceptance of the Nigerian people. I, so, okay, so yesterday, classic example, Lassie Eleanor wanted to wish me a happy birthday. He posted my picture, and the caption was him saying, oh, this small girl that I brought out of the gutter the other day and put her on TV, now she's <coughs> making me proud. And I found that funny. But when I saw the comment section, people were attacking him and saying, oh, that was distasteful, even if he brought out from, from the gutter, you know. So... Do you feel that sometimes you can be overly sensitive? Yes. And how does that affect the material that you, yes, you develop? Yes, yes. Sometimes Nigerians can be insensitive, even though sometimes we comedians you tend to go a little below the belt. Uh, but as a comedian, that's where your wisdom comes to play. That's when you have to, your mental alertness has to, be, has to be key because, first of all, once you get to a crowd, you study the environment, you study the crowd, know the kind of people are there, then you study the kind of, uh, that will determine the kind of jokes you want to give because first of all, you see from, if you have one or two comedians who have performed before you, that will let you know the kind of jokes you have to say. So, but yeah. most times people don't understand that those things are jokes. I, I, um, I get worried when I see somebody comes to a comedy show and they yab you or you hear a joke and you say that was too hard. 
Like, I, I didn't take one. It's a he comedy said to show. Me yesterday, too hard. I yeah, went but, back but, and said, oh, but, the picture from the gutter. You understand? The gutter where we both lived as neighbors. You know, for me, it was just harmless. And bands. people should understand that he's a comedian, that is his job, that he gets paid for what he does. You understand? But most times, people take it too far. And most times, you find out that a lot of people really don't have. So, how far point. really is too far when it comes to comedy? Because there have been some very distasteful comedians. Comedy jokes yeah. that have been passed around. One, some surrounding issues of rape, and we know several comedians who have gotten mm. into trouble because they've talked about issues concerning rape. And the funny thing is, you will still see some people comment here and be like, oh, it's still a joke. So, in your perspective, when it comes to comedy, how far is too far? First of all, um, the ideology of all comedians are different. We all have different ideologies. I might, I, I, I might like to talk on stage, I might like to talk about myself. Personally, like most times, I joke about my leg. I do that because I don't want you, I don't want when I come on stage, you see me and the first thing you want to see is a physically challenged person. What I do is that I tell you first that I know that I'm physically challenged. So there's no way you're going to see me that will make me feel any less than I am. You understand? So I register that first. I yab myself and I, you know, I do those things. But most times people, other comedians are not sensitive to those things. They feel like if you do that, Especially now that we have social media, they feel like if you say those kind of jokes and it gets, they, get, they get probably the negative response, that makes them trend on social media and in quotes, that word blue, they don't blue because they believe bad news is good news. Mm -hmm. So but most times I think it's wrong. You just have to weigh your options, look at the audience, know, pick a story or pick the kind of jokes you want to do. Those are things that will help you and most times... But no matter how it is, you will always find people who think that what you said is bad. But have you ever been in a position where you've given a comedy show and it's been received terribly by the audience? Uh, probably a comedy performance. Mm. Yes, we, we always have our good days and our bad days. It's normal. You probably you prepare so much for a show, you get there, your routines are on check, and you get on stage and you drop this joke and you're expecting the response, you're expecting people to laugh, and they didn't laugh. Mm. You understand? You feel bad. Maybe something went wrong. Probably you did not uh, do your calculations right. You probably, most times to the audience, probably did not understand the joke from the perspective you're coming from. You know, most times you see some comedians who want to um, let the audience know that they are intelligent. They read, um, they, they observe the things that happen in the environment. But that crowd, that audience just wants the regular joke. Ah, I tell him, Mama, this one, Mama, do this one. And so, mm. but it happens. All right, um, we know that with your vast experience, tonight we're going to be seeing you in action. You have a comedy yeah, event. Tell us about it. Definitely. Okay, like uh, tonight, uh, the show is titled um, Baba K Live, an extremely funny comedy concert, which is EFCC, um, the acronym for the show. So um, I'm expecting everybody to come out because, like I mentioned earlier, um, doing the style of comedy that a lot of people are not used to, um, using this opportunity to let people know that um, this same comedy that we all do you can do it in different ways. People do uh, music comedy, people do the regular skits. You know, well. skits. Mm -hmm. Now we have the social media comedy with Instagram comedy, Instagram skits. So there are different ways of making people laugh and mine is different. So let them come out tonight. Thank so you. where's the event happening and how can people get tickets? Yeah, it's happening at um, Chateau de Atlantic Hotel at number 9A Babatunde Jose here in Victoria Island. Um, that's where it's happening. Chateau the Atlantic, number 9A, Baba Tunde just here. Um, you can get your tickets. We have the regular ticket, which goes for 5,000 naira. The VIP ticket for 30,000 naira. The um, table for 10 goes for 350,000 naira. And tickets are available on busybody.ng, ariaticket.com, seatsandticket.com, also ticketninja.com. Um, tickets are available there for people to get Brilliant. There. And in case you're thinking of the perfect way to unwind this Friday night, and this just might be the opportunity you've been waiting for. Go out with your spouse, your friends, come out on Mars and just relax. It's the last Friday in the month of July. Wow, Sit back, that's so true. Relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah, good enough. Wow. Um, I think um, the, the government has um, postponed the closing of um, the Todd Mellon Bridge. I think that's right. Yes, oh, it has yes. been postponed. Yeah, so, so please let them So come. basically, no one has any excuses. Yeah, no excuses. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tomorrow everyone. is Saturday. <laughs> they have all the time to rest all through the weekend. So, so you brilliant. turn up on Friday, yeah. turn up, and then watch the lunar, uh, lunar eclipse. eclipse. And then on Saturday morning, just wake up and treat yourself to a nice serving of Akaran pop, you know, and then just sleep on Saturday. Because well, what's like that? Nice eclipse. Yes, tonight. tonight, tonight. From yeah. 7 24 to 11. That happens every day now. That, that, it happens every day for this country. Hey. Yeah, you never day your house, your lights trip off. <laughs>
You can't open your curtain, your neighbor house. You see, you don't light, you don't light the shine entire house. That's compound eclipse, man. Wow. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.